Hello, you are you there? Hello. Yeah, I can start the meeting. Okay. You are you there? Hello, you are you there? I can hear you. Yes, I'm here. Oh, you can start, Hello? please. I have medical. You can hear you. Okay, again. All right. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Enya Victor. I'm, I'm the one to take this session of um, the infrastructure training on the road design. I'm coming. Hi. Our chat, our chat and this thing box is it. Through the Google Drive where you can download some of the materials for the training. The screen is blank. Can't see you speaking. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it is okay now. So materials have been shared via our chat box. Yeah, via our chat box. So we will be going through the the road design using the tokens of the 3D. The last of this training. So I will, let me also put some of the materials. <laughs> I'm sharing my screen. Basically, we'll be going through the interface. The tokens will be the interface. The will use user interface and the interface to create environment with additional tools for creating and managing simple design features. Some of the tokens features, such as command line and ribbon, work, work the same in the tokens. The same thing as the card, you have the tokens embedded in it. So the custom three is the, the DMI software. So the next slide, the user interface. This is the interface of this, this, this is the interface. This is the same thing as our normal auto card where we have the work area, which you can see. Vito, can you screen? Can you zoom it? So this is the work area. This is our work area here. The work, work area, the work interface. We, we will create our work. And these are those are the right, same. Right. Hello? Can we change this? Are you using your PowerPoint? Put it to a slide mode. Slide mode, yeah. So basically, this is this is the interface now. The interface, the interface and civil trading. The same thing as AutoCAD. The same thing as the video card we have been used to. These are work area, the work area, and these are the two space. Yeah, are the two space. Yes, this this this, this space are the two. Yeah, there's our home tab. Yeah. Ah, no, this no. This is our tail of the design that we have. Oh, yes. It's a quick access to bank. Then we can actually switch our interface. If we decide to work on AutoCAD, or we decide to work using Civil 3, we can switch your interface here. Civil 3 to AutoCAD. Let me show an illustration. So this is Civil 3 interface, the one I've launched. Mm -hmm. uh, this is interface. interface now. So this is the work area here. This place is the work area, the one on the one on the training work area. Yeah. Here is a quick access to this place here. 
in the pick access tool bar, where we have this, the computer that you click, you can naturally switch from 3D to AutoCAD without any notation. If I click here, I switch. So it's taking me to an AutoCAD interface now. So I'm on an AutoCAD interface. I can switch to 3D modeling. I want to model in 3D. I can switch to line analysis. So this in Civil 3D, if you have Civil 3D, Civil 3D comes with a full package. You have AutoCAD in it, you have drafting analysis, you have a storm water analysis, or those tools there that are attached in Civil 3D. So this, this is the one we work with, making use of the Civil 3D aspect of it, the other aspect of it. So on this, on this other aspect of it, we have, let me go back to our slide. So, we have the peak access toolbar, which I was showing. Peak access toolbar, you can see it here. Then, then we have the ribbons, normal ribbons in our new software using the home, the home tab, insert, annotate, modify, analyze, view, output, manage, survey, help online and express tool. Then we have the tool space, then we have the workspace here, which I just showed, the civil 3D. To draft the annotation, the modeling, the planning and analysis, the savers, and the workspace settings, and all. So, this is the two space window. These two spaces is just like it are conversant with any of um, any structural software or any other software, any structural software, or any other software. If you're working, if you're working like that, if I'm working on any alignment or root alignment, you should be updating here that. If you update it, I'm working on alignment. If you update it, I'm working on pipe network. If you update, I'm working on surface. So at this point, I can actually switch and off my layer. These two spaces here. I can actually switch in my layer. I can, I can actually off my alignment, off my surface, switch my surface to be off. And as well, switch my corridor, my settings. I can decide to make them off, to switch them off. These two spaces is something as layer properties in AutoCAD, where you create different layers. Using colors and you can switch the layers on and off. You see, we that this one has to do with your points. Once you import a point, you see it showing here they affected a point group. You put a surface, you see that this point, there will be a box and attached, showing you affected a surface. You get alignment, you see it showing you affected alignment. You can actually select the alignment and switch it on and switch the point group off. So we will be, you know, in, in the that in details, then we'll go into the, into the usage of the software. So basically, in road design, the first point of call, if I'm to create a road design now, the first point of count on um, in back on is what we call an inception or a recce report. I will go for a recce or an inception report about the theory on the theory I'm about to work on. So then I will now go to my surveyor. The surveyor will now do a reconnaissance survey and a detailed survey, bringing bring out the coordinates of that terrain I'm working on. So that coordinate, the coordinate comes, the coordinate comes, comes in different forms. There's a format in 73D in which the surveyor is expected to give you the coordinate, we call it pen Z or pen Z or pen Z, pen Z. So that pen Z, what it is, what the pen Z signifies means. So what depends is on this P E Z E N Z D. So what this pen says signifies is that the P the P starts stands for point number. The E stands for the estimating value, the estimating coordinates. Estimating coordinates. The N stands for the mountain.
28 and for elevation. Where is the height? The height. Then the D stands for the raw description. So these are the four, the four or five major items that the survey was expected to give to you when he goes out for his reconnaissance of it. The color is reconnaissance and decades of war very long. So if you have to give you the eastern coordinates, the northern and the northern, these three. These three are the major elements we use in Karata road design. The Eastern, Northly, in any of the design, if you are doing a network, a public analysis, or you need this coordinate. Those are the major three things you need. So you need your Eastern, Northly, and the elevation. Basically, because of the basically, let's go into details now. Basically, if I start the route design, what are the steps you need to so the route selection and design depends on one, depends on the nature of the subgrade. Depends on one. But if I start the route design now, the first point of call is looking at one, the nature of the subgrade, the traffic and the condition, the control time. It's a plan to look at materials and the equipment and personnel and the expert is involved. So this is like a typical road showing a cut through, a cut through the shoulder, the cover, the driveway, the surface or wearing cut. So the, the, the computer design was then made the requirement being for it. So we have different road class, but then the road now we have, based in Nigeria, based on Nigeria, we have class, we have class A, B, C, we have the local federal, we have the federal, state, and local rules. So we are designing for particular class. Those design has to meet the criteria, the standard assigned, as in the, the, the standard assigned to that particular class. If I can design for a federal highway now, I know that my design speed should be minimum of 100 km per hour. My coverage, yours, the minimum coverage, yours, my minimum horizontal coverage should, be 300, should not be less than 300 mm. For the vertical and sag increase curve, my K value should not be less than. I think for the SAG 35 or for the CRES, for the CRES 35, the SAG, I think 35, 40. So those are the criteria I will pick into consideration when I'm designing for a federal road, a state road, and a local road. So this is a typical, showing a width of clearance of the road. The central ditch, port, Surface cross, base cross, travel lane, travel way, crown and shoulders. The typical cross section of the road. So, what are the steps you require when you are carrying the road design? The first thing, like I explained, the geometric design process begins with a good quality topographical survey, which must have been carried out by the surveyor using his, using his data, using a, a defensive GPS or total station or, or or using uh, what they call this one, um, the first one, um, high target instruments. So, in, those are the instruments you use to pick out a duplicate to photographic survey of the area. And that to go survey must be at an interval. Like from doing from time for a road of, say, 25 meters, a road of 15 meters, I will expect the survey to give me at every interval, I should pick the high defense, let's say 15 meters. But then I will expect to pick at least 25. Minimum width of 25 meters with at 5 meter interval, it can give me the coordinates and the heights at any rate and goes down straight from design for two kilometers. So if it's going 25 meters, it's going to pick like five dakas for me, the eastern end, the north, the height at its 5 5 meter interval, and goes down 20, 20, 25 meter interval down to the eastern end of the, of the two kilometer road. So then the design process can be discovered in the following steps. One, the first thing you need to do. You need to draw the full center line of the, of the topographical survey. That's why it's advisable if a surveyor is to go to site and carry out the details of it. It's always advisable to 
for you to instruct, for you to instruct the subject, I should always indicate, let him indicate the center line of the road for you. So that it will, it will, it will maybe your, when you're doing your total alignment, it will be easier for you. So let him indicate the center line when he's picking the his coordinates. On his description tab, you write C, center line, for you. So that once you call in your data into the software, you will see the center line of the road and play and go along with the, to go the survey. Then plot the center line on the plan and profile paper. Then calculate the grids, the degree of coverage of river curves, curves length of vertical curves. So the software will do this on automatic for us. Then compare the, the values of step three with the road specification. Just like I said, this, this step three, once you are done with this, you are, you are done putting your horizontal alignment. And once you are done with your alignment, the next step is to bring out your profile, which is your vertical alignment, which will not draw your profile. <laughs> Try to balance your cut and fill. Then after you are done with that, then the, all these core parameters will come out once, and you see, you see, you you able to know if actually the route meets the required specification for that for what you are designing. So you check and check the grids, check the the k values of the of, of the curves, the length of the curve, and the radius of the of the alignment, and check if they meet the required specifications. So if they are good, then you. You cannot go to the next phase of it of doing your cross section design or assemblies and all. So you are just a center line it to reduce any over calculated needs. So you are you are just them and meet the vertical and other curve that exists the specification. Then you draw the typical cross section. Then after you are done, then you cannot design your hydraulic structures, being the bridge, covert, drainages, retaining walls and all. You cannot design for them the hydraulic structures. If you have them there. So basically, before building a road or an FQ, the engineer must be the best vertical alignment of possibly concerned. Design both vertical and vertical alignment to keep side distance to jump to minimum. And you define the root of space of edge lines and curves to meet the stated dimension of capacity. So the horizontal alignment, the principle of horizontal alignment, as soon as we have a tangent, when you have tangents, if I'm designing for a road now, say I'm designing for a road that, um, let's say, a load from local jar to from Abba, from Abuja to Bukuda, I'm designing that road. And I'm having a tangent. I'm having a tangent. If I'm going now, I'm not expected to design it. If I'm designing the road, tangent should be as long as possible. Without, should be at, at a longer distance. Not if I'm driving, I'm designing a road, I'm entering a curve, a curve, a curve, a curve. It's, that is not a good design. Let your curve be at a longer distance and let the tangent be as long as possible. Not if I'm driving, I'm entering a road, I'm seeing a curve, a curve. Because when, I, when I'm having a straight tangent, that I can play with. But if it's a terrain that around you put in a curve on that road, that the terrain goes undulating like that, those you have to just have to design like that. But in real life, the, be, the best part is let your curve be at a longer distance. Let your curve be at longer, not a shorter distance from designing the road. I will go imagine the curve, imagine the curve. It's not that's not a good design. But if it's, a, if it's a terrain, like if you are going to Enugu now, you see that terrain, the way they designed that road to Enugu, you see that you're having curves, curves, curves. And so those are the terrain, you, you don't have to play with terrain like that. Then if you go to Calabaro, Ubu, beside the same thing, you see those roads, you're going to enter into those curves, curves. It's because of the terrain. So those straight like that. Because the shortest is between two points is a connecting straight line. The record should have a standard permit portion of way between two points in one target. Therefore, an engineer should make each target as long as possible, limit the number of curves, provide long straight stretches, thereby improving the road capacity. So you try as much as possible to limit the number of curves. And if you are designing a road, if you are designing a road like 20 kilometers straight, and you don't design a straight tangent without introducing the curves, it's not a very good design as well. You have to create for you, you have to find a way of creating a curve on that alignment on that route. Because if that road is straight, the driver is driving, they might just they will rest as they will just, just relax and drive. Some some might actually sleep off when they're driving on the way. So you just have, if you try not to try and create a curve, at least one, two, three, create a curve. So that when they're driving, they will, they will be they will be they will go there. I love that there's a curve somewhere, there's a curve somewhere. So but if it's a straight road going down straight. No, no matter what I say, make the course as gentle as possible. Long and gentle course, increase the capacity of the road by permitting high speed. This will provide a safer path for travel for vehicles. So, making gentle or that course will increase 
the problem. They were the people that are like, how about the relation in Thailand's 99 or compared to the best it gained by using the number of calls? So, what does us explain? What does us explain now? You are designing a road, try as much as possible to avoid short calls. Yeah, at right. least I'm driving at 100 meters, having curve, 100 meters curve, 100, it's not ideal. At least let the curve be at a longer distance. Let it be a longer distance by driving based on federal way because I think the minimum length you can go based on federal I think 750 meters, then you have a curve. 750 meters, you have a curve. Oh, right. Based on down speed, based on the federal I will we'll go through that later. So, element of a vertical curve, these are rules, these are. In the, in the PC, point of call, point of tangent, point of intersection, and the, the tangent distance T, then the radius of the call, the length of the call as well, and the angle of intersection, and then you see those external distance T, the these are those, these are coordinates that will meet when we're doing this thing, when we're going to solve the proper. So these are like a typical tangents, you can see the tangent, these straight tangents, going like this. Is another tangent coming. So to have that smooth transition, you introduce what we call the point is where the point of course starts and where the point of tangent starts. So if, if you are if you go to it, if you are done with it, if you are done like if you are done with your design and you go to set up your road, now this is the point that you will be looking at the point of call peg is on the ground, the point of tangent peg is on the ground, pick out this call with an instrument. So these are the IP yeah. version point, beginning point of circular for E the end of C tangent let them be the depression yeah. angle. The M, the middle denotes the length of chord, the E, the external distance line, okay. then PC and the length of chord. So those calculations we did in the number of calculation, the length of tangent this, actually this, the depression angle is this, and then we calculated and got the tangent length, the radius. The length of curve and so critical then the vertical alignment. So vertical alignment, vertical alignment, okay, the vertical alignment. The vertical alignment. The road will have the, have the if you are doing the road on an on an area view, that is the vertical alignment you are seeing. And if you cut down and view from and you cut the section and view down, that is the vertical alignment you are seeing. So vertical alignment on the road is the actual. Work is the our cut and fee. The vertical element of an under is the cut and fee. Why the vertical element is the root? Is the, oh, okay. um, the, the way the root meander or the root the root passes. You are doing from the top, you are doing the one top. Once you cut down, you see the vertical element. So the two basic okay. things in road design, the two basic, well, in the road design, the two basic entities you need to make sure that don't properly well, is the vertical and the vertical alignment. You can get these two things, the vertical. And this alignment done properly, as long as those are the yeah. major, this way, this is where the major, um, how would I call it, the major work is the vertical and this alignment. And it's simply the vertical alignment ah, is called profile. Why the, why the uh, horizontal alignment is called an alignment. So we'll go into that for a long time in the surface. So it's a little of this. So plus the, plan, the profile view, that's the same thing, and a vertical alignment, the profile view, and as well, the vertical course. So, so we have types of curves. Two types of vertical curves. We have the sag and the cross. The cross is over and inverse. Or we call it a sag, a sag curve, or a cross curve. So a sag. If you are driving down, you see a sag curve coming. This coming there. You see that sag. If you are climbing a hill, you have the the, the cross. You see the cross curve. The limit of the vertical curves. The PDI. With all these elements, you need them in the case when you want to go to the software usage. In case of usage. So the formula for calculating the vertical curve parameter is the gradient oh, is yeah. one going to then these are our key. The key value now recommends the key minimum value for 100 meter for 100 meter for all speeds. Yeah. The key yeah. value now, this key value now, if you are doing a rule design, now this is the key value. The key value here you see here, that is the value the check in this to so what is the key value? What is the, the key value for a sack for the press vertical curve and the sack of vertical curve? If you go to oh. the higher manual, it's it's, it's, it's fine there. And usually, I usually need a design oh, speed of 100 km per hour. It's supposed to have the minimum k value for the press vertical curve should be 50, while for the stack should be 45. So, if it's below that now, you have to also have to increase the length of vertical curve or reduce. If one is higher or one is lower, what that entails is that you're either you're having, no, a, no. Or you're having a field, 
you need to try and balance it and say, okay, I'm having a coach, I'm having a team. So the key value now, you balance it. Having SSP, you go there, one we go to the software proper, we'll see we that in details. So the minimum calculation for the particular core is having these gradients, this gradient and difference of this gradient, the key value of the L over A, the difference of the gradient length of the curve, whatever like this. So you get to use the level and use the curve as it is. You will check. So basically, these are the then these are some of the design standards where we've done that from the head of the mind. The principal geometric design standard proposed on the based on the federal initial cost of some high demand. Actually, the project design speed of all federal to be 100 km per hour. The other for the design of the total and the speed is from. For when the typical road traffic is recommended for two lane, 7.3, 3.65, 3.65. So they show that to be, be 2.75 meters, then the road cross slope should be 2.5%. And they show that cross, cross slope should be 5%. So the minimum super elevation of the road should be 8%. And the right of way which should be 30 meter minimum from the center right. 30 meter from the federal highway manual. Then the cross slopes. In the vertical and vertical alignment, as we have the vertical alignment, the terrain and the road generally control the vertical alignment. Tomorrow, so the data proper attention should be given to the vertical alignment, which carry out the route, which when carrying out the route design. And the fact that the terrain of the viral image and lack steep soil area as the climbing or crawlers, lanes may be considered. Generally, the gradient almost between 0 to 2.5 percent. However, nobody that the depth of field has been kept very low at as the city terrain shows most of the condition. So what is been in the proposal they are proposing, the maximum building is expected that in the design to have its 4%. So if you're going to have 4%, you have to introduce some, what we call it, some road signs that, some road signs at that um, location or at that junction, where you have a gradient above 4%, 5%. So what does it say is that that vehicle, that vehicle is going to run at a higher speed. If even if you are applying your brake on that vehicle, on the vehicle, the vehicle can still be moving at a higher speed. So with this ship are there restricted as the terrain provides for the margin rate of 3.5%. So vertical curves, the vertical curves margin rate 5%, minimum length of the project is 50. The minimum cable the vertical curves are for, for, for crest is 60, and for sad is 35. Now the minimum length of the vertical curve should be 150 meters. Minimum length of the vertical curve should be 100. Even less than that, so then a federal highway rate, a federal road, in passing, in passing, in passing in the ministry. So the minimum length should be 115 meter. Then the K values for the for the crest should be 50, then for the slab should be 35. Then the minimum radius for the horizontal top should be 200 meters. Minimum radius 200 meters. And maximum radius of 500 meters should be located in the design. The minimum should be 300 meters. So these are the square elevations value as well. Fire. Then passing and passing and stopping size start distance as well. It's been there. So if you're driving up, if you're driving for a speed of 100 km per hour, the stopping size distance the minimum should be 100 meters. The passing size distance the minimum should be 600 meters. Then pavement design, you have to be, the pavement design shall be hinged on number of factors, such as the strength of the existing foundation of the pavement. The passes are available so it can be standard as you are for the design period of 20 years. So if you are doing, if you are doing a pavement design, now you have to carry out your traffic analysis. And if you know the eyes are not coming in that vehicle, the load of lighter vehicle, you have to do some your, your some soil, you carry your CBR, you for a proposed for propose for a good soil. You see, you see the CBR, you carry your CBR test, do your as load and uh, want to get the pavement thickness. So, as a, as a well as traffic lane, the project route is based on this. So, it's for ministry specifically, specify the electric material of CBR greater than 30 percent for the sub base. Then, for the base course, they specify the stone base material of CBR greater than 30 percent. So, then the surface should be 100 mm as part of concrete. You have your binder 60, then you're wearing 40. The binder should be 60, then you're wearing 40. So, everything. Related to the 100 and then you have to try it. Then. So the cross section as well, the roadway, the single carry view of the total condition width of 12.2 meters, comprising of 7.3 meter 
single carriage way of two sequencing five liter with shoulder on both sides. So the total carriage way should be for a single carriage way should be twelve point eight liter based on federal on the federal standard, federal high uh, federal rules. So three point six five, three point six five. Having a shoulder of two point seven five, two point seven five. Everything cumulative gives the total carriage way of twelve point eight liters. And as well, then and you have labor and bus stop. Where you have labor and bus stop, you use the labor and bus stop. Then you design all the other designs. This has to be this one. All the all the necessary stories and knowledge of design of operational structure has been undertaken in separate methodological and hydraulic reports. So this has to be done by a hydraulic engineer or a hydraulic engineer. Who was a hydraulic carrier? The hydraulic data of the area from design for drainage. You have to bring out trees. I don't look analysis and propose the size of the data will be adequate for that road. If it's a covert, the same thing. You have to carry out the logical analysis for the front. To carry out the logical analysis and bring out the detailed report of, and then propose the size of the covert. That's the size of the covert that we use in that terrain. Then especially now we now do to carry out the natural design aspect of it. So the construction of such as the nature of the soil, but the extreme part, road profile, which also will also be reviewed before a final decision on the size and conclusion of any necessary structures are taken. So you need to consider the soil, the flood plains, the stream part, and the road profile. As well, so for you now, think that you will be going up to push your proposed sizing of the covert, the drainage, is a bridge, the kind of the report, because they propose and the height of the piers and all. Then the right of road, right of road, which is determined by the space required for road pavement, should have sided. And however, since the entire length of the project road lies on the federal limit, on it, on it lies as federal road, the minimum length of right of road is taken as taken with respect to the availability of the land. The right of road, the special courts, all schools required for roadway drains and schools is indicated in the drawing. If you have, if you have so much in a drawing, you have to make you show the right of road as well. Detail the right of road, showing your drainage at all, and the right of road. From the center line, casting the first inside the town. Should be one thing. So, basically, these are all some of the introductions. The materials that have been shared on here, where our chat is there by Nauchi. So, you can download the materials. So you can just you can download the, the materials there our chat our chat board on our Google Drive on the Google Drive you see them there all the materials are there. So basically now let's we'll go into the software usage now. Today we'll be looking at points, importing of points, creating a surface as well, creating an alignment, different from it. So the first point of corner on our slide here now. The first thing of is points. It's a point that also acts with the objects that can be displayed in a drawing and manipulated graphically. So points are trying to be using points, right? points, labels, and point size. So what this point contains is that is the points of uh, the data is a real collected from the site using these instruments. So those are the points now we might import into the software. And we need to create our horizontal alignment and put our surface using our points. So basically, let me share some of the points. Let me share so that I'm having here. Yes, yes, yes. Hello? Well, I'm basically, let's say, so let's say this is the this is the point that is very well strange to move. It's very well said so well that I've gone to site and do the recognizance of the or details of it. And they sent me they sent me this coordinate, these data. So the first point of what we're looking at is okay, fine. The first thing of course we're looking at that is looking at my friends. 
Ah, I'm looking at this format I explained initially. This format here. This pen Z, this P now represents the point number. The E represents the eastern coordinate. The N represents the mountain. And the Z, the elevation. And the Z, the road is too short. So I'm going to look, okay, if it's only the same method, I will check what are these formats. This pen Z is the format that is we have in. The same thing I'm, I'm having on my Excel. So I will look, I will look the first one, this one here now. Is this one represent the point number? Those point number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Then this one here now represents what the eastern coordinates. The eastern. The eastern. This represents the northern. This represents the height, and this represents the description. What are the what that description in this? If it's going to take a coordinate now, I'm taking a coordinate at point one. This is my point one. I'm taking a coordinate, I'm putting my instrument, my notes, and my elevation. At that point, if I'm having an electric pool, you're going to indicate that it's the other decision type, EP, electric pool. If it's having a manhole, MH, manhole, there's a manhole there. So those are the two. You describe it with short application. So, but if you give a detailed meaning of those applications, you know, like this one here, now I'm showing, I'm showing that there's a fence, FNC, there is a fence there, EP, and I let people at that point it is. Then CL indicates what the center line of the data of the road. So, for me to import this point into civil trading, there's a format to save this Excel workbook. It is a format to save it. It's a format to save, it. it's a format to save this and input into, into that format is called CSV comma delimited. It's called CSV comma delimited. So this is the format you save on your Excel book before the software will accept it. accept the the, the data. So to do that now, yeah. do that now. We'll go to file. I'll click save. Save us. I will now browse. Here I want to save my. I'll click desktop. And I'll come to this and give my final Say training for one. Road training day one. So this is my save as type now. It's showing is on the is on Excel workbook. I'll come down to this idea now and choose CSV comma delimited. So I will save it in a CSV comma delimited. The next point of call, I will not click save. If you ask me yes, do you want to? I will say yes. So I've saved. So I've saved now the next point of corner is to now import my data now into the software now. So how do I go about that now? Based on this our slide now. The same point autocast is the 3D object that can be displayed in the drawing and manipulated graphical point of reference is controlled using point label and point star. So to create to create point now, so I should click on my home tab, click on create ground data panel, point menu, and point creation tool. So at that junction, I can import my points into the software. So I should click what? I should click. This is my home tab is active. Then this is my create ground data panel here. And this is points. So I should click on this point. So I say I should click on point creation tool. So I will now click on import points. So this is the first step used in importing your points. I will show you three steps. I will indicate three steps that you can use to pull out your points. So those three steps, what am I, those three steps I'll be using the, my major emphasis is I'm looking for any I'm having points, 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 that the name is points. I have one, you have 
point here one. I have one half point here two. Then there's something not showing here. You can see I'm having home tab. Insert, annotate, modify, analyze, and review. So I'll come to this place. I'm having this drop down arrow here. Then I'll say show menu bar. If I click show menu bar, you see something be displayed on on the screen. Just tell me now. So I will go. So I'll, I'll, I'll be looking at points here now. Points, I have points here as well. If I should come to this point here now, I'm having points. Okay. If there is an icon I'm looking, I'm looking for is not displaying. So I'll look for those not a half point here. This point and this point. If I come to this one and select this and say point creation to, and I click on import point, you can see it's taking me to this dialog box where I have import points dialog box. And if I go to this place, this point as well, point, I right click, select the point, right click, and say create, then import. You can see it's taking me to that same point there, import points as well.
So, if I should come to this place here now and say show menu bar. So this, this is the menu bar I explain here now. I have five. I have edges. I have view. I have inserts. Genera. Survey. Point. Surface. Lines and curves. Plots. Grading. Alignments. Profile. Corridors. Sections. Vibes. Annotation. Inquiry. Window and all. If I should come back to this place and say hide menu bar. It goes up. So I'll come here and say display, show menu bars. So I need those menu bars to be displayed. So you can see at this point now, what I did, I have points here, I have points, and I have points here, I have three points, three places where the name point appeared. One is here points, one is points, and one is points. So if I should come to this and say, select this, point creation tool, import points. So I click here, show me import points. So it brings this dialog box, show me the import points. That's the first approach you use in calling, in bringing, in calling out your points into the work area. Then the next one is this one here now, and the two space. This is two space. If I click this now, it goes off. Once I click this black, it comes back on. I'm having two space here. If I should right click this and say create, it takes me to that dialog and I'll click import points. So it takes me to the same dialog box. This is the second output of importing your points. And the last one is this menu bar, which I don't show. That's being displayed here. As you click on points, I'll click here and say import points. So these are the three approach you use in importing your points. And then you go through, you come out with this, using these points here, select this, point creation to import points. Or, you go to these points, select this, right click, create, import points. Or you go to this show menu bar, select the points, then go to import slash export point, then you click on import points. Those are the three main approach you use in importing your points. And the next point of course is that click on that point and the dialog box shows up like this. And the next point of course is to add the file you want to import. As you, then I'll come to that and click add. Once I click add, now I'll come down and select. If you see, if you're using Simple 3D, if I'm launching the software for the first time, the first time, this place I'm showing five types, showing CSV, will be showing to you all files like this. All files will be showing, all files. So the next, the all files we're showing. So we now go to this place and change the, the file style to, to be CSV. We change it from all files to CSV. So all the CSV files that, that are displayed on your desktop or where you, or your document or anywhere you save the folder will be, will be showed, will be displayed. So I'll now select, this is the CSV file. I'll select now select this now. I will now click open. Once I click open, watch now. See what you show me, show me what? No point five formats found. So show me that no point five formats found. What is the cause of this now? If you're trying to import your point into civil trading, there are three and uh, there, there are three, how would I put that three challenges in my encounter when trying to import your point or three or uh, three problems you see when you import your point. One, if the Excel folder is open that you're working on and you, and, and you try importing that point into civil trading. It will show this, this error. This error is showing here. No file format. This, this, no file format mount. Uh, no file format match found. It will show that. Then two, if for eventual, when the, the surveyor is entering his data, he made a mistake. Instead of using, instead of using like, using these points now, this is having it point now. You made a mistake and put a comma sign instead of a dot sign. The, the data won't be displayed. We showed it. We showed that sign. We showed that error again. No file format found. If private, he made a mistake and put and put a comma sign instead of a dot sign to show that no file format found. So you you now show you that down down with it. It displayed to you the the code that's having that error. That's having that comma sign to be displayed to you on the that place you try importing the data into the software. And the last one, if for adventure now,
if for adventure, it's one of the gifts that I'm mean, put here, point number, he, he, gave, he gives them a header. He calls here P. Yeah, E. Yeah, N. Yeah, Z. And yeah, D. That is the full point number. Oh, yeah, it's team value. It's team. Let me say, not team. This is elevation. Then come to this and I call your description. See, for eventually you save your, this gives you data that you can save this and you save the work on this format, you save this work and try to import it into the software. You will see this one here as a different entity because the middle preference is the point, the number, the coordinate, the elevation, the description. So, if once it's real, she gives you data and it indicates the header, showing you that this is the point number, this is this thing, this is not in elevation description. You save this work now and try importing it into the software. If you show you that same format, if you show you that same error message, no file format one. If it's real, she gives you data like this. and you send the first bit of code you need to do, you just select this and just delete this cell, delete it. Then you now save your work in CSV for now, even if there's, look at stuff like I said, um, and you ensure and you check that there is no, you didn't make a mistake when you put in the time, and put in the command sign. So you check and ensure as well. Then the next, the last one is, when trying to import the data, if the Excel workbook, the Excel, Workbook is on, on that that you are working on is open. So to see show that same error message, no file format found. So watch, let me close this one now and import the data. Click, don't save. Let me go back to my, listen again, I'll go back to points now. Or this point, point creation to import points. So I'll now click on add file, add files. So once I click on the plus sign, add files, now locate where my folder is where I saved this that I'm working on for my desktop. So I'll select this. If I click open now, watch it's still good. That's still good now showing that this match selected file format found. So if parameter that Excel work is open, if the Excel work which is open, like I said, it won't be displayed. If you have a comma sign instead of a dot sign, it will be displayed. And if you survey your she indicates a header of those. I of those that are collected on site, it will be displayed. So the, the header, the title, the header must be, the header must be deleted. The comma must be checked to ensure there is no comma sign, and the Excel workbook must be closed. Those are the three scenarios that you encounter when trying to import your point. You have challenges when importing your points. So if you understand those things, you won't have challenges when importing your points. The workbook must be closed. The header must they must be taken out. They must, they must be deleted and ensure that there is no comma on any of the data sense. So the next part of corner, this is where now, you can see I say specify 0.5 formats, filtering on. You can see we have here, the first one is what? E, N, Z. If it's real, she gives you data that has the easterning, nothing and the elevation alone. So you have to use, select this first format to match with the one you are, to match with the format you are bringing in. If it's real, she give you data that has Eastening, not in an elevation anymore. So you select this one to match with that one as you are calling it, you are bringing it. If it's well, I should give you what now? If you have a word now, N E Z. This one in 65 that the nothing now comes, the nothing data comes first before the eastening. So how do you know the difference between nothing and eastening data? If it's what you send the data for you now, 
Mais lui, c'est comment tu as expliqué Jenna Lui, c'est comment tu as expliqué Jenna So, I'm severe my decide, the, my decide, they can decide, it can, it can change this format and make it to be something like this. I'm looking to something, something like this. P, N, Z, D. You see the same thing. So, the serious, so I'm severe my decide to make this to be P, N, Z, D. So, your point of reference now, we should, we should be checking your data so to see which of the now the point of you'll be checking now to see which of the data which of the coordinates first appears before the other so how do you know which one first appears the noting value in all the coordinate noting is always higher than the estimate the noting value is always is, is always higher than the estimate. So if if it's should give me this two, these two, is this 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 is my estimate, this my not If it's should interchange this now, make this one comes first before this. I will know that the noting comes first before the estimate because the noting is always the higher, the always has the highest value compared to the estimate is lower compared to the noting. So this is the estimate here now. Two four three, and this is the noting. So the noting is always Higher than this thing. So these are the intrigue you know, you need to consider when you put your point. Which you know which of the items, which of the items that comes first before the other. If for the is real, brings the not in first. So your format now will be this E N E Z. But if he put the Eastern in first, the format will now be. Right now will now be P E N Z D. So why this is like why you need to ensure you know if for adventure you import the data into the software and you select and you for adventure selected the wrong specified format that was shown here that is shown here. You see that the coordinate will the code will also will, will take you far from where it's supposed to be. So it will be your reference for palette on the workspace. I will do two. I would, I would, I will, I will import two that I, I will import two that I receive. I will import the one that has the right format and the one that has the wrong format. So you do, you will to try it and see why you need to ensure that you select the one, the way the survey of the data. If it is not in that context, you take, select the not. If it is in that context, you select the STD, P E N Z. Or if for example, you give the data that does not have, you can see we have in this one now, E N Z. Data that I have only ENZ, ENZ. That has only the estimate, the noting, and the elevation. It does not have the point number. It does not have the raw description. It does not have the raw description. It does not have the P. So you just have to you have select this to ensure it's not. Or it has, or it is data that has NEZ. So you select the one that matches it. If you're on your work, on your cell workbook, this. If someone should give me now, okay, let me say someone give me this coordinate alone. So this this coordinate, this one is now what? E N Z. So when I'm when I save this on my when I save this in the CSV comma limited form, uh, format, if I'm importing it into the software now, I want to ensure I select. This one as I'm watching it ends this class. If the one coming in will match the format down, I'm, I'm ready to go for the one coming in. I'll select this. If it's very easy, I'll select it. So if we go down, we'll see different formats. You can see we have P, E, N, Z. If it's what should give you the data that has the points, number, the Eastern name, the North name, and the elevation. And it's not having a raw description. So you select this format, this one now. If it's the DVD, this, this, this one I'm working on now. You see this one I'm working on now. It's, it's having what? Description on description tab on this. So we're having P E N P E N Z T. So this is a raw description. This is the point number, the estimate, not in 
the elevation and the description. So as well, this as well too. If it's a word, you select this, this thing, same thing as well. So if it comes down now, you see you have P and E. If you give a number that has points, number, nothing, and instrument. Then this one is P, E, and P, and E, Z. You can see now the nothing is not coming before the instrument value. So we'll go down to 70, P, and E, Z, D as well. So let me try and importing that uh, format now. Format now is P, E, N, Z. So the next one of call P, V, N, Z. That and click open. And see, show me that, show me that the Excel work is open now. All I do now is close it. Let me see. Let me see. So I will go back and import the things now. I will not select the format. Once I select the format, watch down your this at this junction to duplicate the way the data is being saved on my Excel workbook. So go down and select. So you can see the way showing point number, estimate, not name, point level, and raw description. So the next of corner, what can you say? Ah, I reported my point, and my point is not displayed on my screen. What is the cause of it? If I make sure I, I did this, I just click OK now. That point will be displayed on my screen. The next one I have to ensure that I have I check this box, add point to point group. So I click add point to point group. The next one, if I, if I click add point to point group and I still click OK, that's the point will be displayed on the work area. I have to ensure that I add I come to this box, let's have this box here. And you have to ensure I click on it and give it a name. Point five format, create a group for it. Just like you are, when you are creating, if you are working in multi card, you are creating layers, lines, and all. You create line, beam, slab, follow, windows, all. You give them a name. So once you want to work on that layer, you go to that layer, you switch that layer on and off. It's the same thing replicating here now. So if for eventual, I click OK now to be sure that on this, you see this space will have this point group here now. To be sure that there's no, there's no point, as in there's no layer for that point group created. So I have to ensure that I, I checked that point to point group and I click this and give the point group a name. And give the point group a name. Say, what? So I'll click what? OK. Once I click OK now, next code of car will not click OK. Once I click OK now, you see that on my screen now, on my screen now, you see that the point is, is not displayed on my screen. So how will I make the point to be this? How will I bring that the point which be displayed? I will do a, a command in the car which will only Zoom extend command. Zoom extend. I will just type Z, enter. Then I'll type E, extend, enter. So to bring out the code, the points, the point now will now be displayed on my screen. So these are the points now. On that alignment, on that, um, that on that route. So if you, if you are done, press Z, enter. E and uh, zoom extends. So the point will be displayed on the screen. So this, you can see the way this, you can see the way this is being joined as I'm duplicated on the work area. If for eventually now, I selected the wrong format, you see this, uh, the thing will take me to another coordinate. So let me try and do that so that we see. Let me add another work area here. 
let me go and import a point, go to the points, point creation tool. And I click on import points. Now go to add. And I open this and click open. So once I come down, I selected the wrong format. I selected this format now. Watch. You can see I click add point to point group. And I come and give it a name. And I click OK. Then I type Z, enter. Then E, enter. You can see, you can see the way the code is that's taking me to a different component, showing that the format that you will see, these are the format, this is the format, this will save the work. It's different, the different format means so this is the actual format you use, the P, E, N, Z. So this code is your reference here now. So this one is taking me on that far, the different coordinates. So you're seeing this now. So it is not the P and E. Z. Meanwhile, the way the, my data is being saved of, uh, on my Excel workbook is showing me that the East me comes first before the North me. But now I'm trying to select another command to take the North in that the concept. Well, meanwhile, the East me value is the lower value and it comes first before the North me. So that's what like I said. You have to ensure you checked. Even if so you should give you that time. Check those two, those two coordinates. Which one comes first? Which room? Which column comes first before the other? Which column comes first? The nothing is always higher than this thing. The nothing is the higher value compared to this thing. So you check which one comes first and you select and you ensure you select the right format so that the drawing will be properly to your reference on your work here. Yeah. So if you are, are done importing the points now, So then if you put the point now, the next point of call now is to you go to this as slide and say the, is it, is it the points appearance is controlled using points label and point style. The point appearance. So we want to control the, the appearance of that point point so if you can see. Take a look at this point here now. If you are the points a little bit clumsy, that can pass. So we have to control the appearance of our point. How do we go about that? We select the points. So once I was select the points, now you can see. Watch my ribbon here now. This is your home tab. Watch the whole of this event. What is here? So if I select any entity I'm working on now, all the properties that are assigned to that, or how will I call it? All the editing tools assigned to that element will be displayed on this my ribbon tab on my, on my ribbon here. So once I select this now, watch the showing home tab. I'm going to select this now, watch. It changes now. It show me, it give me this now. All the properties that are assigned to these points I can use to edit or work on the points are the ones that we have. Other edit points, point properties, remember points, that we level from surface, unlock, lock points, import, export, trap, transfer points, create points, create point group, import point, create surface, and properties, object, your isolate, inquiry, exit, and add labels. How to add labels? So example, so I want to control my point style and my point label style now. How do I go about that now? I've selected the points. At the next point of time, I'll go to point group properties here. I've selected, I've selected the point and I'll go to point group properties. So on this point group properties, I'll go to point style. Just like based on our <laughs> slide, it says point appearance is confusing point labels and point styles. So I will go to I will point style now. I need point the best time. So on this point style now, I will come to this box that has a pencil sign attached to it. Once I want to select the box that has a pencil sign attached to it, it will take me to information like this. I'm launching it for the first time. Then I will now click on marker. Once I click on marker, I will now come and choose the marker style. And then I decide to choose this. I will not come and reduce my text size to be 0.5. And I'll click apply. See now it has dropped and I'll click OK. If I'm done with that, the next one I'll go to point label style. So my point label style, I'll select 
the same thing as well, the pencil sign here. Or this a deep current selection. Or it's maybe so select this straight up. The same thing. Or you come to this um, drop down arrow here and select a deep current selection. Or you click on, you click as the pause has a pencil sign. So I click this line. It will not take me to, so I'm not for the first time to take you to information. So I will now go to layers tab now. So on this layer tab, I have three items I'm consuming here. I have one. I have, because this company name, I have three items I will be working on to do the text size as well. I have, there is a three, I have points description, point number, and point elevation. So point description, point number, and point elevation. So I'll select on the point description. Now go to this place and this text size here. Mix at 0 0.5. Next one, I will come down back to the top and arrow and select point number as well. Maybe this is 0 0.5 as well. Now come to this side and select point elevation. Now we'll make it as well 0 0.5. So from done, I'll now click apply and see the text. Now I'll click OK. Now I'll click apply. And okay, so now you see now the point has now the point two between those two and the point label and the point star. From then we'll the next point of corner is to create my surface. But before creating the surface, I will let I will I will I will still go about importing the point again, but this time around I will import the point for different entities. Or different uh, items. So how would I go about that now? I will go to I'll open my Excel workbook now. Before I will create a surface first, let me show you and do that. I will say I'll open that. I'll open this. So now. I want to call out, like if I'm walking the road now, I want to know the location of my manhole or the location of my electric post or the location of my, I want to call out, if it's where should give me the road to show, I indicate the center line of my road now. I want to bring out the center line to put it on that same item I'm working on. I'll show, I'll do for the center line and electric post. So how will I go about that now? I will take control here on my Excel workbook. Select the item that is the tool we call here sort and filter in Excel. So I will go to that tool here now. Sort and filter. And I'll click filter. Once I click filter, then it will, it will attach the drop down arrow at each column. So I'll go to the last column, which, which has the raw description. I'll select it and select and select and select and check and select all. So this junction now, let's say I want to select only the center line data. I'm not going to open my center line data. I come down. I also let I want to let them see and see center line data. I select the whole CL. Yeah, I click OK. So I click OK, you see now this is now showing me the coordinates at the center line of the surveyor establishment site. The center line of the road, the coordinates, the elevations, and the, and the, the point group at the center line. So well, the next one of corners is I'm working on this as I will not do if I should save, if I save this my CL on this workbook, on this. Make say what we can work on and try importing the data for the CL alone into the software. The whole data, the whole data on the survey on the route on the road route will still be displayed on my work area here. 
the whole, the whole letter will still come, comes out like this. So what will I do now? I will go back here. Instead of me saving this now, I will do a country A. Because the whole, the whole letter is still on this workbook here. I just, what do I, what do I do? I don't hit some, I hit, I hit some of the data, but they are still displayed here. So I will not say control A, I'll say control C. I'll copy this to a new control M and paste this in a new Excel workbook. So I will now go to file, then I'll save as my browse. Then I'll save on my desktop and call this. Uh, then I'll come to save as type and change it to says the comma delete and I can now go. Now come to this and do the same name. So our name is on our CL data. CL data. Center and data. Now this will not be seen. Yes. Okay. I should go back to that. We do to bring that one. And I come to this side now and say on select all. So I will now go back and say, let me on to, on to import as well my electric pool. The locations where they are. And I click OK. So you see the data now at that location. So will I do again? I will now say Control A. Control C, then I'll control N, then I'll control V. I'll paste this. Then I'll go to file. Then I'll click save as my drive. Then I'll save on my desktop. Change the save as type to the word CSV format the limited. And I'll click save. Yes. So at this juncture now, when I import, I will import the EP. I will import the CL data and the EP data into the software. So I'll close, I'll ensure that this, the two workbook are closed. I'll close this, don't see. I close this, don't see. And I close the last one, don't see. So I will now go into my software, I'll go to points now. I'll now go to point creation to I'll now click on import points and I'll click add add file. So I'll now come to this point and select this. This is my save data now. I'll click open. Well, I think I'll now come down here and select the format, then Z. So I'll now click add point to point group. I'll share is checked. And I'll come to this side now and give this one a name now. And I'll click OK. And I'll click OK. You show me that if you point as you take it, please let the select the option below to resolve the computer. I'll just click OK. And then I'll now go to this point again. I'll go to import point again. Now I'll click this EP data. I'll click open. So I'll come down here. I'll select the format then Z. I'll add for the phone group as well. Then I'll come to this side again and give it its own name. Load. I'll click OK, OK. Then I'll click OK. Why am I giving them those names? So it's like, because like I say, it's like you're creating your layers in your card. The same thing as well. You create layers for us. So working on, on your social members, slash, column, bin. Column label, slash, begins, bin, begins. So you create those layers. So you can do what, what the, the layers for. So you can actually switch them, off them, and, and I send different colors to them. It's the same thing that works here as well. So as I've created that layers, and I've created, I've created that group for, the first one is the whole data. The second one is the center line. Then the third one is the EP. So if I should close this now, if I should close this now, and I come to this point group, I see them there now. I'm having them here now. You can see I'm having EP. 
I'm having CL, I'm having CR. This is the whole data now. The root one, so the whole 21, the whole data I imported. This one is the CL and this is the EP. So this CL is still found, if you can see, you see on this, that's why I show you, it's giving me that next counter that the, the duplicate point has been detected, showing that the point already exists. It's not that the point already exists on the, it's already, it's already uh, existing. So the next one, what would I do now? If I want to make them to be displayed individually now, say, okay, this is good that I want to switch it on and off. I want only the CL to be displayed or the EP to be displayed. Uh, what would I do? I'll select this, this one now. The training, the training one, that is the that I will right click. Then I'll go to properties. So the properties now on my point style, it's showing busy. And my point level style is showing points, elevation, and description. Point style is showing busy. Point level style is showing point, elevation, and description. I also I'll select this regular arrow here, select this, and I'll come to the, I'll choose none to switch it off. And I'll come to point level style. Now choose none as well, switch it off. So once I click apply and okay. So you see, you show me now the EP and the CL data. So I want only the CL to be, to be displayed for me on the screen. I will now come to the screen, I'll select this as well. I'll right click, I'll select this, I'll right click and go to properties. And I'll change from point star, I'll change this to be none. The point level style is as well none. And I'll click apply. And okay, so you can see now. So this is not showing me the center line. You can see, CL that out. And the CL. That's how the CL that out. You can see center line, center line, center line, center line, center line, center line. Center line. So to bring back this point, to make this point be displayed back, I will come to this point. This is my who data. This is the old who data. All right, click and say property. Where I have none here now, I will go back and take it back to how it was looking initially. I will change it to basic. Then my point level style, my point level style, I will change it to points, elevation, and description. And I will click apply. And okay. So the whole point now will also come on and display on the screen. So, if, so these are how you go, these are, these, these are the steps and processes you use to go about the reporting your points. First of all, you import the good data. If the survey or she indicates the data, the center line for you, fine, you good. You filter the data from the Excel folder and you call in that one on the go. Then you, then you filter as many as much, much good data as you have. You call them on the on the own, you call them on the own as well. So if you are done now, the next one of corner is to create surface. It's create it is to create your surface. If we go to our if we go to our slide here now. So you see after alignment, another point here, the next one of corner is what surface. So say surface are the most basic and basic element of any project. Surface is a mode for creating any root pipe. Or pipe network. We are creating our surface now. Surface, you know, it's like I'm picking the data now. What does all the do is that the area you survey your cover, the area you covered when capturing the data will be the entire area the surface will be created around. So if it's a way of fixing fix the data now on this road now, let's say I'm having a video of 25 meter on the street data. So that external area is where he has when you play system priority benchmark. To be the entire area the surface will be taken around. The hardware it has is TDM. So the, the software will just like you see, you watch this now. You can see we have some, some points here. We have one here, we have one. These are the TDM, the temporary benchmark here established on site. Those are the temporary benchmark, the coordinate of the temporary benchmark. So when creating your surface now, surface now will be surface will be created along. The entire area you cover, including the temporary benchmark we established or she established on site. So the credit for the surface now.
create, you create your surface now. Say you create surface, click home tab, create your data panel, surface menu, and create surface. And see home tab is active, then this is the average. See, after point, you're having what? Surface. After point here, you're having surface. After point here, you're having surface. You can see they flow the, they flow themselves sequentially. After point, you have surface. Point, surface, point, surface. So based on this slide, instead of create surface, you go to this idea and create your own data panel, which is this. You click on surface and click create surface. The same thing likewise is you come to this side as well. You select the surface, right? Click create surface. Or you come to this place that I showed that menu bar. I was hitting initially. Select this. I click on it. Create surface. So you know if they are, you know, they, it's easy if you are working in the studio, you have to approach. So anyone that you are comfortable with, or you remember, you can tell you what You can see when I was working on points, I was looking on the name points. Point, 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 point. When I'm working on surface, I'm looking at the at the name surface, surface, and surface, 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 and surface. Point, 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 and point. If for eventual, I launch your surface first, and this is not showing. It will be like this. If I explain, say hide menu bar. It will be showing like this. So once you come to this drawing arrow, click access to click access to bar and say show menu bar. It will display showing you the white items here. So we create a surface now. From creating surface, I will now say I'll select this, create surface. And I'll click OK. So once I click OK, watch now it has not created a box and a box and has, has not been attached to the surface. So I will now expand, I will expand this my box sign. You can see me now showing you surface one. So I will expand this surface one now as well. Then I will go to definition and, and expand my definition as well. In my major Point of call, I'll be looking for the, the, the name point group. So I'll come here and see point group. Because I've created a point group already, which is this one here. These are the point groups I've created. This, this, and this. So I'll go to that place and look for point group. What did I write? So I, I expanded this surface. Because initially, when I, when, I close, when I clicked on this and click create surface, this box I was created. I will not, I will, then I will expand this. Go to the surface. This is the name of the surface. I can already change the name. I want to expand this. So I expand my surface one. Now I'll go to definition. Then I will expand my definition as well. <clears throat> then I'll go to point group. In this program, I will now right click and say add. What, what I want trying to do, I'm trying to match. The point I imported with the surface I created. So on this point, you can see it's showing me the point group name. I'm having EP, CL, and this. So when creating your surface, when creating your surface, your major package is to ensure you select the whole data, not the filtered one. Because this one, this center line, this CL and the EP, they are still within the that are important, which is the good data, this one here. So this CL is standing alone, the EP is standing alone, but this one is covered, covers both the EP, CL, there's all, all the good data. It's very established on the size, the full data. So I'll select this and click apply and okay. So my surface now will now be created around the boundary. So you see the surface now created. I'm going to create the surface from using TV and then the age of the road, TV, the very benchmarks. So, this is now the surface created for me. So, if I'm working on this surface now, this surface now is the surface on ground. That's the surface where I'll draw it for as I'm 
So if I should go back now, the next one is for call. If I should go back now, it's okay. So I will get it to later. I go back here and I selected this. And so I right click and go to properties. And I switch this off. I choose none. And this as well, none. And I click apply and okay. You can see those that are still within, they are still inside the surface. But if for eventual issue, I picked this one and create a surface, only this one now. So the surface will be created around the center line. It will be located like this. I will like put it It will be located along this root part like this. So that's what we created. We should get to that and find some of that time. So if you are creating your surface, just like I said, you have to you must ensure you select the whole data to create a surface. The whole data, the first data you are importing is the whole data that will that, 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 that from the site. Then the other ones are the specific one that will enable that will aid you in drawing your in carrying out your drawing your horizontal alignment. So as to if you have an electric pole, you can take your road away from the electric pole. If you're having a manhole, the other location will have this manhole. You can able to know if this is where we have my road, let my road go like this. And if you if you know that we pass the across the manual fine, so the way you can avoid it and take your alignment to the other side, then you avoid it. Also, those why that's why you need to that's why you pick up and you ensure you pick up those and then you can call them in. Then the CL will enable you to draw your other alignment perfectly well. The center line. But if I have to discover thing indicate the center line for me, I can still draw it as well. Do more discretion and draw my take a line, get the center line, take the measure the area, the the width he covered when taking out this data. You know, get center line and trace and go. So you can see that this is still within the surface. So I'll select this as well. Properties. Now go this one, okay, this one, okay, that's fine. Okay, so so this is now my CL. My center line of my road. See, if paraventure, the reason why surface is being created, if paraventure I'm drawing my alignment now, and my alignment should go, my alignment paraventure, like say, like now, I pick this and I'm drawing my alignment like this now. And my alignment paraventure goes outside the surface now, like this. On my profile, you see that it will be displayed on the profile that that place will be displayed. That place will be displayed empty and it will show empty, empty values because the survey didn't capture any data. Is the is not the capture any data outside my surface? So at this point here now I have this line outside the surface now. I should pick a profile and create this profile now. I should drop the profile now. At this point now you see that I'll, I'll, I'll be having values from here to this teenage here from here down. Just display zero 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 zero. But no value displayed there because. This way we didn't capture that particular area. It was not your reference. That place will be just showing zero, no values. The values will be showing blank, 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 empty, empty. So that's the essence of you creating your surface. So the surface will enable, enables, 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 but if it's going outside the area, your profile idea will just show blank, blank values. So any question? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Ah, well done for a, a job. Hi, right here. Well explained. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, can I can hear you. Okay. My concern here is that um, there are times that the survey will just send you the raw data without classifying it. So in that case, how, how do you now classify it? Because sometimes it comes with um, so many. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how do you classify it to arrange it in this format that you are just showing us now? 
six. I don't know. The format you are just my understanding format you're talking about that we give you some value zero zero one 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 one. Exactly, exactly the raw data itself. So you need yes, to yes. come back. At that point, if you pick, there's a way you can you can you'll be able to fish out the to bring out the eastern name, the northern yeah. and the right. I don't I will yeah. check what I have some some I will check what I have the data, I'll have some data side, I will check and see. So that I can to have I will be I will display that and you get the clear picture of how you call out the data. Well, basically, most of those that know what they're doing now that they're up to date and know what they're doing. Most of them don't send data like that again. But they have high instruments that uh, they, 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 they are up to trend and know what that it takes them. Most, they hardly send data like that. Most, they're up to date and they are they know the trend and what happened. They hardly send data like that. Most of them are not getting it. Mostly, hardly. But a few of them do still send like that too. So by maybe the next class, I will find it like that and I will display it and bring out the coordinator. Bring out the Easterning, the Northern and the elevations and the point number for the data term. Yeah, because sometimes you as an engineer too, you're expected to have that same raw data because sometimes in the cost of converting this information, the surveyors might not be very careful to you know so you need to have a way or have a knowledge of how to also create or get those data correctly so that once the survey is sending you you are sure that what he's sending you is the right data that's what uh, 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 the work took you so well to actually give us the data there's a way you can actually still confirm it that but it's not you have to go with them on site Stay with them. If you want to work with them, let them. You guys can as well do it. Step up to seven. Why? 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 It will show you it is on the right alignment. So, so this is my, my concern. I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Sometimes you most, most times and sometimes some of them some of us are very well to do. If you give them to go and carry out some, how would I call it some survey sometimes? Most of them do go to the site. Some they just, just like what you say, they get some data that they calculate and do some yeah, nine computation and then to bring out the code and or and all. So it's still better for us. Yes, that's why we go on site. It's still better for us to now check and do check. Once I don't go check, come up with something. At times, most of them they do use uh, what do they call they use Google Intermediate and generate coordinates as well. Most. Yeah. And and then, to make it, to make coordinate, even if you go to say you're having different entirely. Yeah, different yeah. Entirely. And you know there are times you can your points um, from this um, Google Earth. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, so then um, you also need to survey who will also confirm those um, points. So, 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 another question. Um, good, good evening. Uh, good evening. Yeah, please. Um, and well done. My question is, uh, me for example, you are trying to do um, like, I don't. Maybe I should call it a preliminary design now and you don't want to engage a surveyor yet for example like what the former person just said you want to just probably get something from google Earth just to have an idea something like that yes. or you have um like a drawing already for your road yeah. so you have not commissioned a surveyor you don't have the points you don't have um, you know survey data so yeah. for that kind of drawing can you create a surface in AutoCAD for something that you don't have um, points for, you don't have survey data for, can you, can we create a surface 
for that kind of drawing? That's my question. Because I know that you can't really do any design on civil 3D without creating a surface first. So, yes. so that's what I'm asking. Yes, you can't do But if for adventure, if for adventure you get that uh, recorded from the Google image, imaging, you know, there's a way you can convert it using uh, what they call this thing, the global mapper. You think how they call it and all, and the nature of calling. But if you create the surface, still yet, you, what you're having on ground, the different from what you're having on the imagery. So you just have to ensure the surface to go on site and then do the right thing. Yeah, but I'm asking if for any reasons you don't have access to survey data and you have a drawing oh, for your road, can surface. you create, can we create surface for a road that we, for which we don't have um, no. data points? No. Okay. No. Oh, thank you. Another question. Another question. Hello. 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 <clears throat> yeah, I'm also wondering if. Uh... Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah, I'm. I'm only yes. Yeah, what about uh, the styles of the points? How do we edit the styles of the points and the characters and the things like that? I think I displayed that on screen. Okay, I, I was off the line after some issues with network. I think I must have missed it then. I want to display, edit my styles now on screen. I will also yes. let the point like this now. Can I see your screen? Yes. I want to select the points. I can see the point properties. Okay. And I'll go to point style. You see, I'm having point style here. I'm yes. having point level style here. Then I'll go to this box sign I'm having here now. Yes. That has a pencil sign. Or hit on an arrow. I'll select it and go to edit current selection. Yes. If I click on this, it will not take me to information. I'm going to for the first time. Then I'll go yes. to marker. So once I go to marker, then I'll come to this other and use the text height. Then I'll give it a marker sign. Let's say I want, let's say I want to increase this now. Increase this. Let's say I'm increasing this to like one now. I'll click apply now. You see now, it has this the text. The mm -hmm. text. Yes. Then I'll click OK. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. for the one different style, labels, you can see it here now. Yes. I will still go back to this box and has a pencil sign attached to it as well. Yes. Let it. Then once I let it, if I'm not changing for the first time, to take with the information, then I'll go to layout. So once I click on layout, and I have, I'll go to this place that has component name. I have three entities here. I will be changing point description, point number, and point elevation. So I will start with this first, the point description. I will select the text size here. Let's say one as well. Then I can decide to give it a different color. If I want to the point description, I can try to say, I will come to this and I will have layer. And I will try to can give them different colors for the points. If I choose to give them different colors. Then I select this, okay, let this be green. I will click okay. You can see showing here now. Then I'll go back to this, my point. I'll go back to the component name and choose point number. And I'll make this one as well, one or 0 0.5. And decide to give it a different color and say maybe red. I'll click OK. You can see it's showing here now. Then I'll go to the last component name, which is the elevation. And I can decide to okay, make it maybe two. I'll make here maybe white. Okay, what's here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. click okay, then I'll click apply and okay. And once I'm done, I'll click apply and okay. So you see now it's now the number displayed on the screen. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So at this junction, we we'll stop at this. Excuse me, I have a question, sir. Okay. 
Um, I thought I heard the other lady mention something about. Um, I thought I heard her say that you can't make any designs until you have a soft face in three D. Is that true? Yes. Um, I didn't know that. Okay. Yes. And then my my second question is these central lines. Yeah. Uh, my just my just be me, but they don't look like they're aligned to the soft face. No, no. Is that just that's why the center line, that's why it, it depends on how the terrain is when it's where the root part. How is it? So it's left for you now. If you're designing your design, it's left for you now to now come up with a design that will ensure that, like now, if I'm if I want to do my alignment now, that's how I was, I was explaining. This, this center line is not aligned. If I'm taking my alignment now, I'll pick a line. And I'm drawing my alignment now. I'm going from here. See, so I'm going now. I'm going like this now. I'm going like this now. See the way I'm going out. I'm going out outside the center line. And I drop something here like this now. Okay. Let's say I go like this. I'm going like this now. I click. This this, this, this should be tried out on our, on our next class. I click. 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 What am I doing as I'm doing this now? If I should convert this to an alignment now, you show that I'm putting multiple curves on that road. It will be seen this point, I'm joining this, I'm connecting this line now as curve. So what, so what's our best call? Our best corner is to go and see we have critical curves on that road. We'll drop, they will drop like knife. I'm going like this now. See, I know, I know that if I'm on my route, I want to have gone to side and know where I have. That's why if you are going, if you if are been doing the arrakis of your, where they're going to say, you go with them and ensure you took not those teenagers will have those calls. So I know that at this place now, at those they call it and those calls will have those calls. I know that somewhere now, if I'm going like this now, I might need a call to transit this road somewhere here to take it down. If I would just come, I can just come from here and say, okay, let me click. And I'll now take this one down. Then I can now take and watch and then. Look. This one you get was just it's just like an assumed how like a proposed center line. Now you the designer now will now bring out the real center line that they will use in setting out the coordinates, setting out the road and field. So this one I was drawn, I, I drew now. If I did a road design, if I'm clicking like this, 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 and you put in what you call the road design will, will, will adopt the principle we use in school when we are plotting um, those days, when we're plotting our situation, situation line of best fit. You have three codes that join that passes through the line, you are fine with it, and you are good to go. The line of best fit, not clicking at every, at, 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 at every or the couple points. We click, we click, we click. We look for the line of best fit and take, just like I said, we take the target at a longer distance and avoid those short curves. So we in our subsequent class from next week, I will I will display this in detail when we are creating our total alignment. So we'll see this in detail. Hello. All right. All right. Thank you. Hello. Hello. All right. Um. Hi. Thank you for your attention. Hi. So um, the recorded version of this uh, class will be uploaded um in the group chat. Mm -hmm. So you can go through it at your own time. Thank you. Well, the class has officially ended. Okay, engineer, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.